For the first few days, I've been trying to make a PCB because my college professor gave a student a project in this semester that involves PCB making. So in this video, I will show you how I make my PCB from printed layout to the finished product. First, we need to cut our printed layout. I have three PCB layout in this paper, but I will use the LED array layout for this video. Use a baby oil on the printed layout. This will make the paper look like transparent and the print will show in the back. Use some clothes to remove the baby oil on the paper. We don't want any baby oil on the PCB because baby oil can cause some bubbles. The PCB that I use is a presensitized PCB. I have a lot of reusable PCB. I just choose a small PCB that I can use. The tape is optional. I use tape to hold the PCB in place, so I use a cutter. I use the blunt part of the cutter and not the sharp one. So to cut the cutter, you need to score the PCB 50 times on both the front and the back of the PCB. Now you can snap the PCB to get the size that you want. I'll be using fluorescent as the light source. You need to make sure the light source is approximately 5 cm away from the exposed PCV. In my case, it's actually 6 cm away. Get a glass to help to put weight on the PCB and printed layout. Now, fill the white sticker. This will expose the photoresist film in the PCB and be careful because when the PCB is exposed, it will be very sensitive and might ruin the layout. Put the layout on the top of the PCB and add glass to increase the connection of the PCB and the printed layout. Leave this around for 25 minutes. That is actually the best um, result that I get when I experimented with this fluorescent lamp. While waiting, we can prefer the developer solution. To make a developer solution, add 1000 milliliters of water in a container. And add approximately 30 grams of sodium hydroxide. Be sure to wear gloves because sodium hydroxide can slowly burn your skin. After sodium hydroxide is been dissolved into water, this liquid can be known as a solution. To balance the mixture, add one cup of solution in a container 
and also add two cups of water also in the container. After 25 minutes countdown, your PCB is ready for the developing process. Prepare the developer solution and a water. Put the PCB in the developer solution and shake it until the layout appear and the unwanted film is being removed. Chloride is used for etching the copper. It is best to wear gloves when etching just for safety. The ferric that I use is not pure and not a good quality. I leave the PCB in the ferric for around 1 to 2 hours without shaking to get a good result. This is morely based on my experience using this ferric chloride. If you are using a good quality ferric chloride, then there's a chance that you will just need to put your PCB in ferric for around 10 to 20 minutes while shaking it. After waiting approximately one hour, all the unwanted cover should be removed. Now you just need to clean the PCB with water. Use an acetone to remove the film and this way it will show the copper. You can also use a sandpaper but I don't really recommend this method. Finishing the product where we drill the hole in the PCB and also the stage where we mount all the components. Also during the PCB, I mount the component one by one to make the soldiering less difficult. I use tape to hold the component in place. The way I solder the component is by putting the soldering tips in the component's legs and add a little soldering lid and then remove the soldering lid swinging up to the top and then removing the soldering tip swinging it also to the top. This process makes the soldering lid into the pads looks like a chocolate kisses and it looks well made and very presentable if the soldering lid has a shape of a, a kisses candy. I tested the final product to make sure it worked and the PCB worked just fine.
gives me a temp on PCB making and after a few days that I've been trying to make a PCB, I am now comfortable on how I make a PCB. So this is it. I hope you like it and bye!